Good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to a new review. Well, believe it or not, we have yet another Android TV box, but this time around we have something more exciting because this one is actually running Android 7.1. This is called the WeChip V6 and it costs somewhere around $35 to $40, so not that expensive, however the specs aren't the best. So we have a Rock chip 3228 CPU, this is a quad-core CPU, we also have 1 gig of RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage and we do not have dual band Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Starting with a very quick unboxing, so the V6 comes in a plain looking box, on the front we basically see a picture of it and the model name. Inside you're gonna find the device itself, we are also gonna find the remote control, however I do recommend using a wireless keyboard and mouse for a much better experience, there is a small manual in there, a HDMI cable and a power adapter. The TV box itself, it's made out of plastic, it's very small, it's very light and I have to say that it feels kind of cheap. On the left hand side we are going to find two USB ports and one of those USB ports it's actually a USB 3 and we also have a slot for an SD card. Unfortunately we cannot install an SD card as internal storage and you cannot install a USB stick either as internal storage so that is a bit disappointing. As for the internal storage out of that 8 gigs of internal storage that we get to this device we have about 5 left and the speeds that I got for the internal storage were they're kind of low. And moving to the back of the device there you're gonna find the port for the power adapter, the HDMI out, AV and lastly the network adapter port. One great thing about this super cheap TV box is the fact that DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound works very well whenever you're using Kodi, so that's something that I wasn't actually expecting. As I mentioned earlier, this doesn't have dual band Wi-Fi, so of course I've checked out the speeds over a wired connection and over the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band and the speeds that I got are appropriate but not the highest that I've seen. Performance wise, as you'd expect with that Rockchip 3228 CPU, we don't get the highest scores on the Antutu benchmark, the Geekbench 4 and the iStorm Extreme, but that's something normal for this uh, CPU. Aside from that, we also don't get root access from the factory, and I know that that is a bit disappointing for some of you, and uh, we are not going to be able to watch Netflix in HD based on the digital rights management information that we get. As for online streaming, well it does work better than I was expecting, so the first app that I tried was YouTube, unfortunately the maximum resolution on the YouTube app is only 720p and I know that's gonna be disappointing for some of you, however all the videos that I watched on YouTube seem to work very smooth without any issues. I've also tried another streaming app called Modbro and on that one as well uh, all the streams start right away and there is no lag for uh, watching basically anything available on that app. As for Kodi, well this comes pre-installed with Kodi 16.1, so not Kodi 17 and uh, there is no update in the Google Play Store. However, some people mentioned that if you actually uninstall Kodi 16.1 you can install um, a fresh version of Kodi 17 from the Google Play Store. I haven't actually tried on this box. So on Kodi we do get a whole bunch of add-ons that come pre-installed, that's a good thing I guess, however you can easily install um, your own add-ons. And uh, all the streams that I tried on Kodi seem to work good without any issues, so of course Kodi works good on most TV boxes no matter of the specs. I've also tried Real Racing 3 on this um, TV box and I have to be honest I wasn't actually expecting that the game would do good at all but it did much better than I was expecting and I'm gonna let you watch for a couple of seconds so you can see how well it did. Now that you have a better idea of how this performs, I'm gonna start recording the screen, I wanna show you what's new for Android 7 because this looks a bit different than anything that we've seen in the past and I wanna show you that, I'm gonna show you what video files work, what video files don't work, I wanna show you what apps come pre-installed and so on, so basically so you have a better idea if this is worth buying or not. Alright, so this is the launcher that comes pre-installed to the V6, unfortunately even though it does look uh, kind of nice, you can't really change anything here, so some of you may find it better to install a different launcher from the Google Play Store. The next thing I don't like about this is the fact that we don't have the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen, so there is no way of actually bringing the navigation bar up, um, not even if you look um, in the settings. This also means that we don't have the notification tab on top. For the apps that come pre-installed, well, we get the file browser here, we get this film on uh, app, we get the, this Cloud TV app, the Play Store, Netflix, Modbro, we also get the Kodi 16.1 and this one here it's uh, Kodi 16.1 so it's called something else but this is in reality Kodi 16.1. So not that many apps that we get pre-installed. 
The settings app, it's basically what's different between this one and all the other TV boxes with the Android um, 6. So if we click on the settings app, you're gonna find the settings app on the right hand side. So this is something that you'd find on the Nvidia Shield, on the um, Xiaomi Mi Box, um, all the TV boxes that run um, Android TV. So of course here at the network you can connect the Wi-Fi or through a cable, at sound you can change uh, the sound uh, output. So of course uh, as I mentioned before, uh, DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound actually works uh, on this device. A display here you can change the screen resolution, keep in mind that this will be different uh, depending on the TV that you have connected to this TV box. For my TV it's 1080p. Moving back at apps, you basically see whatever apps you have. And if we click here at about, uh, we can see the device's name, which is a uh, Wii chip. We can see the model name V6 and the Android version is 7.1.1 with the latest security patch coming from February 5th, 2017. For languages here, um, like most TV boxes, we have a lot of languages available. And I'm just going to scroll through them. Hopefully you see the one uh, that you may be interested in. So, of course, a lot of uh, languages available here. So hopefully you're able to see the one uh, that you may be interested in. So I'm gonna let uh, this be on English for now. And moving down again, uh, here we can go into more settings. So the more settings screen looks a bit different uh, than anything that we've seen uh, for past Android TV boxes. And this looks a lot like something that you would find on a phone. But again, we don't really have that many more settings here. So not a lot of stuff that you can actually change in here. So this is how Android 7.1 looks on an Android TV box. I have my USB stick plugged in at this time. I'm just going to open a few video files here so we can have a better idea of what works and what doesn't. So we'll start with this one right here. So we'll press play. And I've already tried this one and it does seem to work pretty good. I'm just going to skip forward. So as you can tell, uh, it does seem to work uh, fairly good without any issues. So we'll skip forward again. And let's move to the next, uh, next file. So the next file is going to be this one. As you'd uh, expect, this one is a 3D file and uh, this TV box actually plays it on uh, two portions of the screen basically. So something that you'd be able to see if you'd have like a 3D TV. So let's double click on that and as I said uh, you can see this in 3D basically if you'd have um, those glasses on and a 3D TV but um, we don't have that available but um, anyways uh, it does seem to work um, without any issues. The next file it's a 4K file at uh, 59 frames per second so we'll click on this one and see how well it does. So better than uh, expected of course. Maybe the picture is a bit too dark for my taste, no, I'm not sure if that's just me, but it does look um, a bit darker than uh, we've seen on other TV boxes. So this was uh, 59 frames per second 4K. The next one is gonna be another 4K file, but this one it's at uh, 50 frames per second. And this one also does uh, fairly good. So we'll uh, give it a second. And uh, it does seem to work uh, pretty good, considering the price of the box and that uh, CPU that's not uh, the fastest uh, out there. So we'll stop this one, we'll move to another file and uh, this 720p is the next file that we'll try. And I'm just gonna skip towards the middle. And it does seem to go uh, pretty good and it's nice and clear as well. Okay, so we'll stop this one, we'll move to the next file, this is the next file right here. I should uh, delete this file and just find something else, but uh, I'm, not sure, uh, I'm not sure, I don't remember where I actually got this. So this one also works uh, fairly good. The next one it's gonna be this one. And just like the other ones, uh, this one seems to work uh, pretty good as well. So we can even skip towards the middle here. And again, it uh, still works uh, good. And uh, this is a 4K file at 24 frames per second filmed with my phone. And this one also does uh, good. So no issues uh, here either. And this one, uh, it's not actually gonna work, but we'll uh, try it anyways. But if you do have the MX player installed, uh, it uh, actually works uh, that way. 
and there was one more than that I wanted to try, so this one right here. And let's just click on it. And this one also seems to do fine. So there you have it, these are all the files that work and the files that don't work um, on the V6. Unfortunately, we can't exactly multitask with this TV box, so aside from the fact that we have 1 gig of RAM and a lot of apps will be closed, uh, in the background we don't actually have a multitasking button. However, all the apps that I tried, so for example the Play Store, it does seem to work uh, good. Keep in mind that this is not a high performance uh, CPU, so everything uh, kind of works in slow motion. But everything seems to go good in that uh, slow motion. So no issues with any apps that I opened, uh, none of them crashed or anything like that. So there you have it, this is the first TV box with Android 7.1. Well, considering the price and the low specs, we can't really expect that much from this one, but at least we know that um, we are stepping towards the future. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you did like the video, press that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.